Welcome back to What Are Teenibs with General Disturbance. This is an Object 268. It's a Tier 10 Soviet tank destroyer. It's located on the north spawn of Ruinburg under the command of Cross of St. George. Well, this tank destroyer, or self propelled gun as the Soviets called it, was actually designed and built off the hull of the T 10, the uh, heavy tank. There was uh, formerly to be known as the IS-6 or the IS-8. Eventually, actually went into service as the T-10, or rather was designed as that, or named the T-10, mainly because uh, Stalin died and, well, they didn't want to name anything after him anymore. Because they only needed to name things after him while he was alive, because if they didn't, they got sent to the Gulag or executed by Berea, uh, Beria. I should say. Yeah, so uh, he was quite uh, a dictator. You you only have to watch the film The Death of Stalin to understand exactly how hated he really was and how feared he was by most of the people in the Soviet Union at the time. They really had a fear that uh, if they upset him in any way, they would be executed. And not just them, but the whole family as well. Anyway, that aside... Um, the Object 268 has got a 152mm gun which is capable, according to this, of doing 750 alpha and penetrating 303mm with standard ammo. With premium ammo it goes through 395 but you can see Cross of St George isn't actually carrying any. And unfortunately we just lost our E4 to a shot from that Striv 103B who's looking at us right now. I'm realising, oops, I think I need to get into cover. Yes, he did make a quick exit. Obviously, he realised the uh, 268's got a rather meaty gun. Also got quite a meaty reload time as well. 15.82 seconds is standard. And you can see here that uh, Cross of St George has got it down to 13.69. It's a long reload, but it's a very big shell. In fact, it's two-part ammunition. So the shell itself and then the actual casing to actually get it to uh, move. Yeah, the strip's not coming out to play. There he is. He's moved. Okay, can probably get him. Yeah, 766. He got a high roll. Pulls back to stop any return fire. And parks himself behind the E4, angled. Ow, wasn't angled well enough there. And the return fire didn't hit target. Now, it used to weigh 54 tons. That was fully loaded. And we get clobbered again by that 105mm gun. The problem really was that this was after the war and after uh, when the Cold War was going on. And... They felt that it was a bit too heavy for the bridges in most of Europe. In fact, it's one of the things they had to worry about was if they were going to invade Europe. Oh, he just got a kill shot in the strip. The, the tanks wouldn't be able to get across some of the bridges in Europe because they'd just be too heavy. And therefore, they'd be kind of limited. It's going off to the Progetto, who dies before the shell can uh, leave the barrel. E100 looks to be the next one, and I think he's going to drive over to the fountain to try and get a shot. Nope, you're not going to get anything from there. You have to be a bit closer to the fountain. Yeah, so it was a major problem for the Soviet forces that, yeah, they might have the tanks which have got the ability to bust through the American tanks and the uh, British tanks at the time. But they wouldn't be able to get the tank across the bridges in order to meet the enemy. So, you know, a heavy weight tank destroyer wasn't really on their cards. And that's why there was only one prototype and that was it. They gave up on it. Okay, the E100 is a lot closer. And yes, he gets around into him through the front of his turret. The flat front. Of course, that is wrong because the E100 actually was supposed to carry the same turret as the mouse, which is going to be the rounded turret. And of course, the good thing about the rounded turret meant that it was actually a little 
Oh, didn't get the Yag Panzer, but he did hit it. Yeah, the rounded turret meant that there was only a really a spot at the closest part, the, the actual middle part where the, uh, the ports were, uh, where it was rounded. That's where the armor was thinnest. And of course, so that's what you aim for is the the position just either side of the actual center of the gun the rounded bit and try and get the shell in through there I think the originally when they designed it some of the people were thinking that you know if the shell actually hits the rounded bit it will either ricochet off going upwards or it will actually ricochet downwards and possibly even go into the hull of the vehicle but it was actually the weakest spot was the rounded metal at its point of roundedness <laughs> It's a funny word to say. No, well, you know what I mean. It's actually the, the bit that's closest to you on the turret, the rounded part right alongside the boat. And there's the kill shot. He waited for him to come out just enough. And he's got his kill, all using standard ammo. Now, there's still seven enemy out there, and quite a few of them, but uh, he's actually getting close to the enemy cap area now, and I think he's going to have the chance to... Uh, take out some of the defenders might want to stay on this corner yeah that's it he just moved, wanted to move to a position where he can get good shots on them supposedly there are enemy over the other side there's an e3 okay he's just spotted the e3 is looking at him as well and misses and he misses as well both tanks have got oversized guns, but the E3 is going to reload before Gosses and George does. And you can see that's the spot where the strip managed to punch through the armor. The cheeks of the casement is where he managed to get the shell in. And he's taking a lot of care to come out carefully, so he's not exposing too much of the vehicle. We've lost sight of the E3. There he is. Gets one in through the side for 8.59. It's a high roll. I think it did more damage than we thought because he actually stopped and took more damage. Ow. Got hit by T-57, but he's going for his next shot. Goes to the lower plate. Didn't get it in. The T-57 heavies hit us in the tracks. But we have got a spotter. The E3 is gone, and he's managed to pen us with another round. Remember, that's a four-shot autoloader C57 Heavy. And he's taking damage now. He's in reload. He's gone behind the building to uh, four more shells in. There's only three enemies remaining. They've got an Object 261. The T-57 Heavy and a Strip 103 b and he gets another round in. It's another high roll for 770, and he's now one shot. Somebody else just got a round into him as well. I think it was the pattern. If the 260 had hit him, it would have been a bit, bit more damage. There's the 261. He's a fair distance away. He's actually behind the buildings. Arati just managed to slam around into him, and Arati's a 261 as well. And that's it. The game's over. They've killed the uh, other one, the other enemy, the Striv. It's all over. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the first class tank for the Cross of St. George in the Object 268. He managed to get a spot advantage for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. His first mark of excellence on the vehicle and a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. He got a win eight of 3,963. And remember, that was all done with standard ammo. No premium ammo was used whatsoever in that game. Let's have a look at the, uh, the team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage. That went to the Object 260 on his team, who got a high caliber steel wall and confederate for 6,159 hit points. The second highest damage was the Jagdpanzer E100 that he took out. 5,675 hit points of damage went to him. And the third highest damage was Cross of St. George in 268 with 4,317. When it came to kills, it was actually the T100 LT who got the best with five. Three kills went to Cross of St. George and also to the Object 261 on the enemy team. And when it went to base XP, it was the 260 again with 1,157, mostly down to the fact that he did a huge amount of damage. 
and 993 went to the T100 LT. I think he was doing some spotting to get that figure. Only 782, right. Uh, but the uh, third highest base XP was Cross of St. George with 980, and uh, that's, again, mostly down to the damage he did. So let's have a look at the uh, detail. 11 shots fired, 9 direct hits, 6 penetrations on the enemy. It was the E3 he was having difficulty trying to pen his lower plate. 4,317 hit points of damage, of which 2,196 were at more than 300 metres. He received 6 hits from the enemy, 4 penetrations to non-penetrations. And I think the um, the 4 penetrations, 2 of those, well, we know that they were from the uh, Strip 103B. who managed to punch them straight through his uh, cheeks on the vehicle. And of course the other shot I think came in was from the E3. Uh, 400 hit points of damage blocked by armor, 5 enemy vehicles damaged, 3 killed, and 1,499 hit points of spotting assist. On a free player count, he earned 37,353 credits, and after repair and ammunition resupply and consumables, took away 16,057 credits profit. He got 7 bonds, because this was a tier 10 vehicle, and he also managed to get 980 base XP, Times two for the first victory, 1,960 experience points altogether. So not a bad game actually. It just goes to show that even in uh, a tank destroy, if you like, uh, if you use standard ammo on a very big gun, you can still get a lot of damage on the enemy. I think the only problem really was that strip because even with a 105 millimeter gun, he still had the punch to uh, get a shell through his armor on his cheeks. And of course, well, with regards to the E3, he did have a very big caliber to do the same. Uh, but uh, yes, just goes to show the, the strips are more dangerous sometimes than the uh, the big heavy monster E3s. But uh, yes, I think you need to pay attention to those uh, strips because uh, if you ever come across one, it's got such high velocity. Plus, of course, it's standard APCR shells. They can get through quite a bit of armor. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and do remember please uh, to let other people know that we exist and that we've got a second channel called the general where we feature replays without any commentary whatsoever but they are really top games thanks for watching